Um, we're here with Garrett Whitley, first round pick of the Tampa Bay Rays 2015. Garrett, thank you so much for joining us uh, for a little interview here. We know you're in the middle of spring training, um, but uh, thanks so much for being here with us. And uh, if I could start, my first question would be, what, I mean, how is this big league camp? What has it been like for you playing? I, I guess you call it a COVID camp or whatever you want to call it, but with all of these all the protocols that you guys are having to go through. What has this whole experience been like so far? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you guys for having me on, uh, and inviting me here, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's been an interesting experience. This is my first big league camp. So, um, I don't really have another major league camp to compare it to. Um, it's been weird with obviously the protocols that we have, we have, you know, testing every other day and, um, we're wearing con like trackers um, so that they can do contact tracing if somebody catches something. Um, obviously, we have mask rules and um, the food situation is uh, it's like to go boxes and that kind of thing, which I know it's not usually. But um, honestly, it's still been a great experience. Um, the the stuff, the protocols aren't too terribly intrusive. Um so I've still been having a great time and, and getting a lot of good work in. Nice. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you. Um, before I go first year, my question, uh, I just want to say I'm also from the 518 from Queensbury, actually. So I've, I've uh, been a big real? fan nice. of yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Real cool what you're uh, doing. But uh, I saw that you played, um, you spent a winter in Australia playing baseball there. I was kind of wondering what that was like and uh, what you learned from that experience. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, I really had a great time out there. I'm glad that the Rays gave me the opportunity to do that and go play out in Perth. Um, I had never been to Australia or like, um, not, I guess I think about it as like super overseas. It's like a 14 hour flight. Like I had never done nothing like that. Um, so it was really cool. And I thought that it was a good experience. It's my first like living abroad like that too, um, because it wasn't too much different than America, but um, it was different enough that I got to experience another culture and go play ball out there. Um, I had a really good time. The weather was great. The people were great. Um, baseball was fun. It was, it was a really good time. How does the competition compare like with Australian baseball league to, I guess the, some of the levels of the minor leagues you've played in? Yeah, it's kind of tough one to, to answer like that. Cause it's just different. Like there's a lot of guys in that league. Um, I had a former big leaguer on a, on our team um he was older i want to say in his like mid to late 30s but like he was playing there were other former big leaguers in the league and then there was guys who um probably wouldn't have played uh professionally in the states um so it was kind of like a wide range of that um you know some of the arms we were facing were throwing 84 85 and a couple were throwing 96 so um yeah, it was kind of a big range, but I mean, it was definitely uh, quality baseball. Um, and I definitely was like happy I went over there. Nice. There yeah, go. for sure. I Go ahead, Matt. Uh, I, was, I was saying it's, it's pretty awesome. I was just wondering, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but um, was it was it mainly um, players from Australia or were there other um, like minor leaguers there? What was that kind of like? So they have rules about how many imports you can have, how many guys who aren't Australian can come and play for each team. I'm forgetting right now what that number is, but I know I went over there with three of my teammates, three of my raised teammates. Um, and then we had a couple other guys, some indie ball players, and uh, I want to say like one or two other Americans, but it was mostly Australians. Um, There's a good, there's a good mix. Do you see any kangaroos? I did see some kangaroos. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> basic question, but <laughs> yeah, um, they're all over down there like deer. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, we're in uh, up in upstate New York. Deer are like, I guess they're like kangaroo. Where you, I mean, you're from upstate New York too, so you know. But mm -hmm. that's crazy. Um, <laughs> I wonder if we could take it back to kind of the beginning, right before your pro ball day started, or even before that. How like you know, growing up playing baseball, how did you know, and then kind of decide that you had a future in baseball and that it was one that you wanted to pursue as a career? Baseball was just always 
my biggest love, really. Um, so I don't know. I just played a lot um, and <laughs> kind of got good like that, I guess. Um, I didn't really realize that professionally this was a real option for me until um, like going into my senior year of high school. Um, before that, I had I had played American Legion in the summers. I didn't play travel or nothing like that. So I, my name wasn't really out there and I wasn't facing a lot of the like dudes, you know, like, um, so, you know, I didn't really realize I had that chance. And then I got invited to go do East coast pro and area codes and kind of blew up from there and, um, was able to compare myself to the other top high school guys in the country and realized that you now, like I really was like good like that. Um, and I really did have an opportunity to pursue it. Nice. Very cool. Um, kind of going off that, me and uh, me and Casey, we we play college baseball here at Ithaca, so we're not mm -hmm. not necessarily top prospects of the big leagues. So we've never played in front of uh, in front of big league scouts. I was wondering, what's that like playing in front of you know twenty, thirty scouts, knowing they're there for you? It was really fun. Uh, I can't. I don't know. Looking back on it, man, it was just like it all happened so quick. I almost didn't even get a chance to to think about it too much because um, obviously I was just doing whatever they would ask. Um, I took extra BP before games. I took extra BP after games. Um, I was having like meetings with all all the teams, all the all the scouts that would come into town would want to meet and talk and stuff. Um, so it was kind of it was really exciting and by the time I was playing my season in the spring, I, I knew most of the scouts like on a first name basis. So it was like, it wasn't scary, I guess. I feel like a lot of people think about it as that like intimidating like that, but it didn't feel that way. Interesting. Wow. That's cool. What are those meetings? What are those, if you're allowed to share, I mean, what are those meetings like when they, do they talk to like you and your parents? Is it stuff like, I always, obviously like Matt said, I've never been approached by a big league scout before, so I'm not sure what, like what goes on in that conversation, I guess, when do they express their interest or is it kind of just, I mean, you kind of assume since they're there. Um, yeah, they're, they want to, you know, kind of get in your head um, because especially when uh, they're looking at picking you high in the draft, they're looking at spending a lot of money on you. They want to know what, what your character is like, um, you know, what your work ethic is like, that kind of thing. So um, really the, the guys who came into town and wanted to have a meeting, um, we'd set it up and they would just come sit down like in my kitchen, me and my parents and them. Um, I'd ask them about their organization, their team. They'd ask me about, um, just me and, and, uh, yeah, just, like I said, just trying to get in my head a little bit and, and see what makes me, me. Um, so it was good. I probably had, I, I met with not every team, but but most of them and a couple of them twice. Very cool. Very cool. It's awesome. Um, so kind of transitioning from the high school um, part of your career and the draft to you get drafted. And I believe you were in um, New Jersey for the draft, right? You were at the. Um, yeah. So it's really cool. So what was it like uh, when you get drafted, uh, shaking the commissioner's hand and, and being there live? Because I know for baseball, not every not every first round pick goes. That was really cool too. It was again, it was like it was just like the culmination of what was a crazy year. Like it was a uh, I mean, I really think about it kind of like whirlwind. Like I didn't have time to yeah. sit down and really think about what I was doing. But afterwards, and even now I think about it, I'm like, yo, like I met Ken Griffey Jr. that day. Like wow. <laughs> Damn. I got a That's picture awesome. of him. Like he was right, like, and the way I think about it is funny because like yeah there's some of the other people that I met. I was a big Red Sox fan growing up. So like um, Tim Wakefield was there and Johnny Damon was there. And like, uh, it was great for me to have my family there with me because I knew that they were, they were loving that. And just to like, see those guys, those people who I'd always looked up to um, now was commissioner Manfred's first year. Um, so that was pretty cool too, to be like his first draft. Um, wow. But just, yeah, getting to meet them all in person and, and, experience that um mlb did a good job to make it a really special day for all of us um even before we were actually at the studio for the draft um so it was really fun that's so cool yeah. i it's actually a so my 
I'm a big baseball card collector and the first like they have Bowman draft or whatever that they release mm-hmm. every year and what that was like the first year that I started like buying Bowman draft cards and okay. I bought like so many cards from 2015 you Dansby Swanson Brendan Rogers that whole draft class was like my favorite okay. class of all time <laughs> I just remember like what and I was like you know what that I might be on that stage someday never happened but you know it was still cool to to look at <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and just awesome to see you guys up there. That was, that was so much fun, but um, I guess kind of even transitioning from that. So you get drafted and, you know, from what you said earlier, which was, which is interesting to learn that, you know, you technically weren't facing those dudes. Like you said, like until you got to area code, East coast pro stuff like that. Was it, was it difficult then going from, you know, first facing that and then going to playing minor league baseball, essentially right after that. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess At, like even the elite high school players are not minor league baseball are not professional baseball players, you know, like um, so that was a big step up for me when I first went and did those things. Um, and obviously uh I adjusted and, and perform well. And then going to pro ball is, um, you know, it's a couple more steps. Like, so it was a pretty big difference. Um, just getting used to everything and especially coming from a smaller school, smaller, especially smaller baseball school up North. Um, there was a lot that I had to learn. There was a pretty steep learning curve. Um, just getting to the point where, you know, when you play professionally, I don't know, um, I'm sure that y'all are doing similar things, I guess. I don't want to say playing professionally, but like beyond high school, um, there's a lot of like little things about the game that you don't have to think about in high school and you do to be really good um, at the next level. So there was a lot of things getting thrown at me and um, obviously try to absorb as much of it as I can. But it was, yeah, it was a big difference. Yeah, yeah very cool. Um. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about um, back to the, the 518 connection. You you played high school against Ian Anderson, right? He was a year below mm-hmm. you, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to ask you, um, you know, like how how cool it is or like what what your kind of thoughts on uh, watching him last year in the um, playoffs and knowing you face him and that you'll probably be in the big league soon facing him and that you're from the you know same area, even though not the same town, what that's kind of like. That was so exciting, man. I mean, I was so happy for him. Like, <laughs> uh, he's a great dude too. Um, we worked out a, a, together a little bit in a, this summer or this past summer um, because I was back home, he was back home. Um, so like he threw live and it, uh, Ben threw live to me and a couple other hitters. Um, and I don't know, man, it was just, you know, you love to see your boys succeed and you love to see um people from the area succeed so just seeing him out there was man it was exciting bro yeah for sure uh, yeah that's cool. awesome yeah that that's so cool i wonder if like and this was something i wondered about so you playing in the rays organization and there's been like a lot of i mean in the since the world series there's a lot of talk about uh, like the analytical side of the game and whether or not some teams potentially abuse that obviously with what happened with um, with Blake Snell in the world series, I'm wondering, and this is kind of a two-part question is, are you privy to any of this like analytical data in the minor leagues? Or is that something you, are you kind of just more worried about I mean, You're worried about your development and trying to get to the next level. Do you focus on that at all? And then also like the second part of that is, is it, Like, is it cool? Is there a cool part in particular about being in the Tampa Bay organization, I guess? Um, Yeah, so I'll answer the second part of it first. Mm -hmm. It's definitely cool to be in this organization because we're always on the forefront um, of every new wave that comes into baseball. The Rays want to be first. Um, And I think that that's awesome that they're willing to put the time into that. Um, And I can definitely see in a lot of ways how it, helps us as a team obviously as a smaller market team we got to do um what we can do to make the best of you know the like the people we got um and obviously going to the world series last year works so um 
but in the minor leagues, we do have some of it, not everything that they have in the bigs. Um, and the higher you get up in the minor leagues, there's more analytical information like that. Um, but they are starting to kind of trickle it down to everybody. Um, but I'm, it's all to further your development. So it's kind of, it goes hand in hand with the traditional coaching. Um, like you can't teach approach at the plate through analytics so much. Like you can look at, you know, what pitch a pitcher might throw in a certain count or um, which counts hitters more likely to chase so that when you're in the box or you're thinking about your at-bats and that kind of thing, you can um, just be aware of those things and, and think about it like that. But at the same time, you still got to go up there and you know, be ready for a fastball and hit the pitch when it comes in the zone. So um, we have a pretty good mix of, of both things. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you were talking how this is your first spring training camp this year. Um, obviously you got the Rays made it to the world series last year and you play outfield. Um, and the outfielders they had last year with Kiermaier and Meadows and Randy Rosarena are all obviously very good players. Uh, what's it like being around them every day and just kind of, um, watching them play and see how they go about things. Yeah, it's great to learn from them, um, to be around them and see the way that they, they do their work and see the way that they handle themselves. Like, um, see the way that KK is, you know, he's a multi gold glove winner, platinum glove winner, and he still takes his, his reads during BP so seriously. And that's the kind of thing that you have to do to be as good as him. Um, and it's just great to be, to be around them, um, to have that little bit of extra motivation and seeing like, yeah, this is where I want to be. And, you know, kind of, feeling like all right like I got a little I got a little ways to go but like it's not it's not out of reach either yeah yeah for sure definitely I wonder too this is a little bit this question is a little bit off topic but I saw an article um about you in um on mlb.com and so obviously with a lot like this year has made just tremendous strides for you know social justice and social awareness and I saw that um they asked you about your decision to kneel during the anthem and I was wondering if do you think that as a professional athlete do you think you guys have kind of a unique um, a unique ability and almost sort of a responsibility to be that that extra advocate for for more social change um well I'll only speak for myself yeah um I don't I don't want to speak for anybody else but I definitely do feel um I mean, I feel really strongly about, about these things. And, um, you know, I'm aware of the, the, even as a minor leaguer, um, at this point, I do have a bigger platform than, than a lot of people do. Um, and so I feel like it's kind of the least that I can do to, like you said, use that platform a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm sure it's a lot of people out there who, who really wish that they could have their voices heard. And there's a lot of people who haven't had their voices heard. Um, who would be dying to have the chance to to say what they need to say in the way that I can um so it is uh it's tough I mean I'm not crazy like I'm not uncomfortable talking about it I'm, I'm really happy to have the conversation um but doing things where I feel like that you know I feel like that protest shouldn't be a controversial thing at this point, yeah. but I'm aware that it still is. And being controversial like that's not usually my deal, but I do kind of feel that responsibility. Like you said, um, yeah. no, I wouldn't feel right to not use my platform um, about something that's as important. Yeah, that makes, that makes total sense. And I, and I think that that's something that, you know, we obviously we've seen, seen it for years, but I think this in particular this past year, it's been really awesome to see athletes use that platform. Um, and I, I just think, I think it's great. So I, and I think that the fact that you, you know, have the really the courage to do that is, is really awesome. So yeah, Thank I, you. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. Thank that's you. awesome stuff for sure. Um, kind of going towards a little less um, serious topic. Um, you know, I think a lot of people talk about 
you know, the grind of minor league baseball players, or professional baseball players and how much work you guys put in. But I mean, I've, I've always been curious, what do you like to do for fun and just kind of take your, uh, take your mind off baseball? I mean, you guys <laughs> do a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I play a lot of video games. Uh, like I'm playing 2K right now. Um, oh, there you me, go. Me, yeah. yeah, me and my roommates um, we just like play tons of games against each other, and we started like a like franchise or something. So Ooh. we just got to our first off season. We we are the Las Vegas Blackjacks. I like created uniforms, did the whole nice. thing, like because I mean it's not anything else to do out here when we're yeah. not in the field. <laughs> so, um, but I do that. Um, I like to read. Uh, and then really, I just like during the season when I'm not at the field, I kind of just like to like chill. I'm not a golfer or a fisher or anything yeah. like that. I know there's lots of guys who do that. Um, but I just like to kind of stay out the sun and like let my body relax. Yeah. yeah. I'm also a big 2k guy. I got a, I got a, my career player going right now. He's only an 82, but hey, all right, we're grinding. Okay. We're grinding. <laughs> with it's hard, man. Player, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's that's what that's all we've got for you basically in terms of our questions but um this this was great and we really appreciate the time thank you so much yeah thanks for having me guys yeah absolutely thanks again yeah, really cool so much fun <laughs> yeah we wish you yeah. a lot of luck too that I, I can't wait to keep watching you play on tv so thanks get it going. <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah. you yeah Pretty thank cool. you good time. luck to you guys too man i listened to um your most recent podcast i think it was not like y'all got a good sound you got a good thing going so oh, thank you good Appreciate luck to it. y'all too awesome thank, thank you, you so much thank you Have man good night. <laughs> thanks guys sweet that was awesome man all right i'll stop the recording <laughs>